I recently reviewed the Dell Latitude 5480, a blast from the past with a capable Intel CPU and discreet NVIDIA GPU that's the little engine that can't. But the biggest gripe I had with the 5480 was that it gets very hot all the time and I wish it had a low voltage CPU in it. Well, look what I found. Slap Tech. This, then, is the Dell Latitude 7480. It's the higher tier laptop from the same generation as the 5480. For clarification, here's how these model numbers work. The first number indicates the tier, 3 is low, 5 is mid, 7 is high. The next number is the screen size, 2 for 12, 3 for 13, and 4 for 14 inches. Next is the model year, 80 is for 2017, 90 for 2018, double aught is 2019, and 20 is from 2021. There, now you're an expert and you know everything. Go by with confidence. Since I already reviewed the 5480 of the same generation, I'm going to do this review a little differently by summarizing my review of the 5480 and then comparing it to the 7480. That way you hopefully won't have to watch the 5480 review in order to get the gist of it. I'm also going to refer to the 5480 as the 5 and the 7480 as the 7 because I'm lazy and the internet will hate me no matter what I do anyway. Let's get the specs of the 7480 out of the way first. Here they are. Pause if you want. Okay, on with the show. The battery on the 7 is a little bit smaller than the 5. Since the other specs are mostly the same and the 7 runs a touchscreen, the 5 is going to give you better battery life, but they're both pretty great nonetheless. And if you want to replace the battery, which you might need to do if you're buying used, one is not easier to replace than the other. Structurally, the 7 is technically thinner and lighter than the 5, though they're both pretty similar in the end, and newer latitudes are way more thin and way more light. Still, compared to most modern laptops, they're very manageable. Also, the 7 is more sturdy than the 5, even though I never thought of the 5 as a particularly flimsy laptop. The 7 is also slightly more stylish, featuring the same basic design, but subtracts the seam around the keyboard and uses a center elongated hinge for the screen. Both models have similar holes in the side, but not identical holes. The 7 lacks a full-sized card reader and is missing a VGA out. It gains nothing over the 5, but at least it still has Thunderbolt 3 and 3 USB-A ports. The insides of the 7 are arranged differently than the 5, but the story is virtually the same. Two accessible RAM slots and a W WAN slot that should also accept either a modem or SATA M.2 2422 SSD. Please note that newer Latitude models don't take SSDs up their W WAN slots. The keyboards on both are pretty much the same. I didn't get a good shot at the 5, it was a little worn when I bought it. The 7 is faring better, but I still greatly prefer the more modern latitudes. The 7420's keyboard has easier actuation with less key travel and better home and end keys. Newer latitudes are also much more expensive, naturally. Touchpads on both are great with physical keys and a nub. Wish I could Frankenstein it into my 7420, except not if it means it would have to be thicker. I suspect that would have to be the case, and if that is the case, I'll take a thinner device over the one with physical touchpad keys. Moving on. To the display! The 7 features a touchscreen that's a little bit brighter and more crisp than the 5 thanks to the reflective coating. I don't normally go for reflective screens at all, but this one on the 7 isn't that bad. I don't use the touchscreen portion at all, but if I was stuck with this instead of the 5, I wouldn't complain in the slightest, especially since it's color accurate. Not perfectly, mind you, and not that it performs well enough for any kind of serious photo editing, but it's a lot of fun to look at since the colors still pop a little. The speakers are stupendous on the 5. The 7 is a far cry away. They still get loud but have no bass and will hiss at you at only 50% volume in some cases. Compared to other manufacturers, you can do much worse than the 7 quite easily, but if speakers are one of the weightier factors of decision, the 5 is a shoe-in. The system performance feels identical, and it should, since they're all old CPUs. Modern software will perform unnoticeably different on the ULV and regular Core i chips. It's worth repeating that the 5 I had contained a regular Core i5 CPU, and it ran hot. Like, 
all the time. This Latitude 7480 stays cool all the time and operates at a whisper drowned out by the quietest of ambient noises. I wouldn't want to use this laptop for video or photo editing, nor serious multi-track audio recording and mastering, but for everyday regular tasks like YouTube, web browsing, and Microsoft Word and Excel, have at it. On to gaming. This 7 Series laptop has no dedicated GPU, just the bare ULV i7 to render whatever you throw at it. The 5 had an anemic NVIDIA GPU with 2 gigs of VRAM that performs unnoticeably better in modern games. It does remarkably well in its own in casual titles. Dead Cells runs perfectly fine, Overcooked 2 is very playable in low details, and anything else with simple shapes and low polygon counts will perform adequately with generous sacrifices like Hotshots Racing. Older titles like Kingdoms of Amalur are also enjoyable in 720p low details. More complicated, graphically intense games like Witcher 2 are anyone's gamble, but most of your emulators will run just fine up to Melon DS. For the bottom line, which one is better, the 5480 or 7480? Based on points, the 5480. It has much better speakers, noticeably better battery life, and is more easily repaired. Even though it's not as light as a 7480, it's in very much the same weight class. But of course, you should go with the 5480 that sports a low voltage CPU, not a standard Core i5. That just puts out way too much heat to be worth it. Is there any situation that calls for the 7480 instead? Not in my humble opinion. The only reason you should go with the 7480 is if touchscreen is life. And even then, it doesn't bend all the way back, so a tablet mode is out of reach. And of course, if you have about $600 to spend, you can either buy a 5480 and deck it out to the nines with a 2TB SSD and 32 gigs of RAM, or you can buy a newer Latitude, like the 7420, and have a much, much better 14-inch laptop experience. This has been a buyer's guide to help you get the most out of your hard-earned cash when shopping for a used Dell Latitude. I hope it helped you find something useful that will enhance your quality of life in today's rough economy. If it didn't, no refunds. Rawr. As always, thanks for watching and you guys, have a good night.